15 royal baby traditions you had no idea existed. Royal babies are watched, anticipated and longed for from the moment the pregnancy is announced, until the big day finally arrives. The royals have rules and traditions for nearly every aspect of the royal birth. Royal babies are watched, anticipated and longed for from the moment the pregnancy is announced, until the big day finally arrives. Millions of people anxiously await the arrival and the announcement of the baby's gender. Since royals keep the gender a secret until the big day arrives usually not even finding out themselves it is highly anticipated. Male heirs used to be the only ones to inherit the throne, though that has recently been changed. Princess Charlotte if it ever came to it could be the Queen of England. When Queen Victoria had her first child, the girl, the OB was disappointed to announce it was a princess. The Duke and Duchess announced the pregnancy of Prince George when Duchess Kate was nearly three months along. As if customary of the royal family, they wait until about 12 weeks along to announce the pregnancy. They wait to announce the baby is on the way, and they wait to announce the baby's name after birth. What isn't kept secret is the arrival and gender of the baby on the big day. Thankfully they announce that immediately for the millions of baby watchers. The royals are known for their customs and traditions with so many things. The royal weddings, engagements, babies these are also exciting for the world to see. The real life fairy tale. But there is something so enchanting about seeing the announcement of a royal baby. Knowing that child has the bloodline of the royals before him slash her and that one day he or she may be on the throne. 15. Must have a home birth. Home births are a new fad among pregnant women. They are also an old royal tradition. Many moms now opting to avoid germy hospitals, to comfortably give birth to their babies at home. The royal family is feeling the same way apparently. Traditionally royal British babies were born at home. This practice was done until Princess Diana. She was known as the People's Princess and decided she would have her babies Prince William and Prince Harry in a private wing of St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington, West London. She was a rule breaker and game changer in many ways. Kate Middleton has given birth to her two royal babies just like her mother-in-law, at St. Mary's Hospital. The Duchess of Cambridge gave birth to Prince George in the hospital, though it's unknown if an epidural was used or just nitrous oxide. When she delivered Princess Charlotte she reportedly did so all natural. No epidural was used. With the impending birth of their third child, there is speculation that the Duchess is considering a home birth. Maybe for this baby she will attempt to be like Queen Elizabeth, who delivered her for babies in her private residences. No matter where she delivers the baby is sure to beautiful. 14. A witness is required in the delivery room. Giving birth is a rather non-private event to begin with. When you are a pregnant member of the royal family a witness is required to be present when you give birth. The witness though cannot be a member of the family. A birth witness has traditionally been used because the baby is a potential heir to the throne. There were concerns that the royals would replace a stillbirth with a baby not of royal blood if something should happen during birth. They thought the family may have a concealed baby waiting in a warming pan to replace the deceased heir. Male heirs have traditionally been preferred to females because as tradition would have it, only males could inherit the throne. When Queen Victoria delivered her firstborn child, the OB disappointedly announced that it was a princess. The queen said not to worry, the next would be a prince. She was correct, and went on to have Prince Edward VII. Princess Kate and Prince William welcomed their first baby Prince George on July 22, 2013. 13. Fathers are not allowed in the delivery room. Traditionally royal dads were not permitted in the delivery room with their wives. Instead they were left to their own accord to worry, pace, wait and hope for the best. When Queen Elizabeth was laboring with Prince Charles, her husband walked the grounds, trying to entertain himself and keep his mind off of worrying about his wife and heir to the throne. Princess Diana and Prince Charles broke this royal rule and he came with his laboring wife to the births of both of their sons. Similar to his dad, Prince William was with Duchess Kate with the births of their two children, and Will for the third as well. It's a rather strange tradition when you consider the fact that a midwife and witness need to accompany the royal woman giving birth, but for some reason the royal prince slash king was not allowed to be in the room. This old outdated tradition has been squashed by the royal family, though they still hold tightly to many others. 12. Royal children must be homoschooled. 
The royals even have traditions and rules when it comes to schooling their kids. Children were throughout the royal British history kept at home for school. The royal family didn't mingle with the common public until recent years. Queen Elizabeth II was homoshuled by tutors. Prince Charles attended private schools, though he had a brief enrollment at a public Scottish school. Princess Diana had her sons enrolled in school, and chose not to homoshule them. Though she of course wouldn't have been the one to do the teaching but the top hired tutors would have been used. Prince William and Prince Harry attended only private schools, until Prince William went to Street Andrews University where he met his wife Kate Middleton. It seems the public university was a very good move for him. Prince George is currently enrolled in an elite school, though his preschool seems to be a bit much for him lately Prince William shared. 11. Non-royal grandparents are kept from the children. The royals really seemed to keep their distance from the common people in past years. Until recently they even kept non-royal grandparents at a distance from the royal grandchildren. Only those of royal blood were allowed to care for and be part of the lives of the children. Today, Princess Kate's parents are very much involved in the lives of their royal grandchildren. They have squashed the old traditions and have been welcomed by the royal family as valuable members of Prince George and Princess Charlotte lives. Having a daughter in the royal family has drawn lots of eyes to this seemingly normal family. Duchess Kate's parents, Michael and Carol Middleton have been very busy in recent years since their daughter became royalty. It seems the royals queen and all have embraced them as members of the elite family. Paparazzi follows them and their younger daughter Pippa around very closely. These doting grandparents are now big time celebrities like it or not. 10. Mom's postpartum outfit is carefully chosen. Oh yes. The postpartum outfit. Is there anything a brand new mom wants less in the world than to be expected to dress up and look amazing heading home from the hospital? I walked it out in my pajamas and sweatshirt, attempting to hide my still round baby belly. Bags were under my eyes larger than dinner plates, and forget about makeup and curly hair. Princess Kate has made postpartum look way too good. The first outfit the royal mom mom wears is ever so carefully chosen. This is such an incredible time, and will be recorded in history for all to see for generations to come. As she presents the baby to the world though he or she will remain nameless for a few days she is expected to look royal, despite all she is feeling and dealing with from the birth. Who could ever forget the glow Princess Diana had after she gave birth to William? She was always so elegant. So stunning. Her daughter-in-law is so much like her. 9. Midwives are present and swore to secrecy. In the U.S. Most women choose to have an OB, the doctor present at birth. In the U.K. This practice isn't the norm, where women typically choose to have midwives instead. The practice of having a midwife-assisted birth is one that you K women and royals alike have done for quite some time. In fact, Having women only in the delivery room was the common practice until recent years where many OBs are men. Duchess Kate has broken from this time-honored tradition and raised a bit of a ruckus by choosing a doctor to deliver her first son, Prince George III in line for the throne. When the Duchess delivered Princess Charlotte she had a team of midwives there. Her birth plan was very specific and asked to be seen by midwives first, before the doctors. Kate's doctors Midwives and birth team had to be on call for over three months before the deliveries and had to abstain from alcohol during that time. All who were present were sworn to secrecy about the details of the birth. 8. The birth announcement is displayed in front of Buckingham Palace. Baby announcements are so fun and creative these days. Many families mail out beautiful cards showing off their brand new bundle of joy. When it comes to a royal birth, the baby is announced all over the world and on a special board in front of Buckingham Palace. In the past the birth announcement was handwritten and put on the display easel in front of the palace. Now the announcement is officially typed on royal letterhead by the OP following the birth. The historically significant announcement is sent by car to the palace for display. The funny thing about the royal announcement is that they never announce the baby's name. Only the gender. People travel from all over to line up to see it. Social media is so convenient today, that this is used in addition to announcing it on the web. Prince William and Duchess Kate announce their children's births on Twitter. 7. After the birth 103 guns go off. 
having the royal baby is a celebratory time for all of the U. K. When Prince George was born in 2013 his birth brought an estimated £247 million in U. K. Retail sales according to CNBC. People from all over the world tuned in for the wedding of William and Kate, and the birth of their children George and Charlotte. Millions of people from all over the U. K. And the world. It is tradition that when the royal baby is born that there is a 62-gun salute at the Tower of London, and another 41-gun salute at Green Park near the palace. This grand gesture is a symbol of celebration and welcoming to the new baby, who may one day be heir to the throne. It's the royal's way of getting the public excited. I don't think they need help in this department about the new baby, and to celebrate together. 6. Royals must give their children three to four first names. Picking the perfect name for your baby is hard. Very hard. When you find one that you like, your husband may hate it. And vice versa. Most of us name our children the first and middle name and of course their last name. Unless your baby is Prince or Madonna. Choosing one or two names is quite challenging for us dominers. Royals have it so much harder. Royals name their babies with three to four first names. Not only do they need to agree on three to four first names, but they also must choose names that have significant meaning. Naming their babies after previous monarchs or other royal family members is part of their tradition. Even though they will have that many first names, they only go by their first, first name. For example, Kate and William's second child Charlotte, will go by Her Royal Highness Princess Charlotte of Cambridge. That's not a mouthful at all. 5. Royal children have no last name. Naming children is not easy for the royals. They choose three to four first names that have to be of historical royal significance to the family. While this is a challenge and I'm assuming rather stressful, they do have one huge advantage the rest of us do not. They royals do not go by last names. Though you and I as common folk have to worry about whether or not our son's name sounds perfect with his last name, since he will have it for the rest of his life the royals do not. They simply have to worry about the first names. Adorable little Prince George will not learn to write his first and last name in preschool this year. Instead he goes by George Cambridge as his surname. When the royals have to sign a document, they only sign their first name. It is assumed that everyone knows who they are so the last name is not necessary. For the gender must be kept a secret until birth. Most couples find adorable ways to announce their baby's gender. There are gender reveal parties where friends and family come over and guess the gender, as they all wait for the big reveal of pink or blue. Then there are the super cute Facebook photos announcing the gender around week 20 of the pregnancy. Most families don't wait until the birth to find out who is joining the family. When you are a royal though, your baby's gender must be kept a secret until the birth. There is speculation that Kate and William know the gender of their third child, though they haven't revealed it. However, they did not know the gender of their first two pregnancies until the babies were born. It is tradition for the couple to announce the birth on the easel in front of Buckingham Palace as well as on social media new tradition but not before the Queen herself has been told. 3. Paternity leave is a tradition. Sometimes things seem incredibly unfair. If your net worth was several billion dollars, would you need your husband home on paternity leave? Probably not. When you are a royal you have the best nannies, cooks, house cleaners, etc. Even still, the royal family has a tradition that the royal men take paternity leave when their children are born. This gives them time to adjust to being parents, and do all of the customary traditions that go along with having a new heir to the throne. Prince William took paternity leave with both of his children. He was seen by Kate's side the doting father and husband. William took about a month's time off for his paternity leave with his children before heading back to work. It's a shame we don't all get this benefit. That would a fantastic perk us dominers would really appreciate. It is assumed that Prince William will be taking some time off with the arrival of his third child as well. 2. The name is never announced right away. Once the little prince or princess has been born, the birth is announced almost immediately. People around the world celebrate and cheer over the newest heir to the throne. Though the baby's gender is revealed immediately, it is tradition to hold off on announcing the name for several days after the birth. It's unclear exactly why they do this but one would speculate that this gives something more for the people to be excited over.
and waiting for Royal babies are big business for the U. K. Bringing in massive amounts of revenue for the economy. People can't get enough of the news and the sheer enjoyment of a real life fairy tale being lived out. The couple does not announce the name until after they have been sent home and a few days later there is a huge announcement. People are already speculating what the newest royal baby will be called. Though that is still to be determined. Especially since we won't even know the gender until the baby has been born. 1. Royal babies have roughly six godparents. Choosing your baby's godparents can be very challenging. You fear that you will offend someone by leaving them out, and at the same time you want the best for your child so you have to choose wisely. Royals don't just choose two godparents for their babies, they choose a handful. Princess Charlotte has five godparents and Prince George has seven. William and Kate decided to honor their extended family members and very close friends with a role of godparent. They did not choose either of their siblings however, though that may be because they are already so close to the children that it wasn't necessary. It has not been announced who the royals will choose to be the godparents of the new baby, but the royals do love to keep secrets about the baby until it's absolutely necessary. Maybe Pippa and Prince Harry will make the cut this time. Or maybe Meghan Markle will one of the baby's godmothers.